On the 13th of December 1945, the execution at Albert Pierpoint was very busy inside Hamlin Prison. It was on that day that he would lead a series of Nazi war criminals out of their cells to the gallows. Some of the most evil former guards of concentration camps were executed that day, and the condemned included Josef Kramer, the Beast of Belsen, and Irma Grazer, the Hyena of Auschwitz. Those who were sentenced to death following the Second World War and the Belsen trials were found guilty of working in Bergen-Belsen, one of the worst concentration camps inside of the Third Reich. But who were those guards who were executed for their work inside of Bergen-Belsen? Join us as we look at this today, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Belsen trial was one of a number of war crimes trials that took place, with the aim of bringing Nazi war criminals to justice following the end of World War II. The Belsen trials took place with the British and civilian personnel running the proceedings, and it took place in Lüneburg in 1945, and a number of defendants had worked inside of Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen. Throughout the trial, many witnesses testified about the horrific conditions of Belsen, a camp which contained great depravity and death around every corner. The trial was titled The Trial of Joseph Kramer and 44 Others, and there were 45 former SS men and women, along with Carpos who were in the dock. There were 16 female SS members of staff and 16 male SS members of staff, and 12 Carpos. Bergen-Belsen initially began its time as an exchange camp for Jewish hostages, but as the camp got bigger, the infrastructure broke down, especially as the war went against the Germans. Throughout its time in use, it's estimated that 120,000 prisoners passed through the barbed wire fences, and more than 50,000 prisoners were killed inside the camp. These figures included Anne Frank and her sister Margot. At Bergen-Belsen, inmates were made to work initially, and many of them were forced to salvage and recycle pieces of leather from shoes brought there. Prisoners in that part of Belsen were treated a little bit better, but things quickly turned at the camp. In March 1944, part of Belsen became a recovery site, where prisoners who were too sick to work at other camps were taken and simply left and forgotten. Many of them died at Belsen from diseases, starvation and a lack of medical attention. Later there was a new section added to the camp, for women, and Belsen by November 1944 received 9,000 women and young girls. But in December 1944, the Beast of Belsen, Josef Kramer, who had previously worked at the extermination camp at Auschwitz-Birkenau, was brought to Belsen to work as the camp's commandant. It was during his late leadership that the camp became colossal in its size, and the fact it became incredibly overcrowded. Bergen-Belsen was only initially planned to hold a few dozen thousand prisoners, but by April the 15th, 1945, 60,000 prisoners were there. This was an increase of around 20,000 prisoners from just two months before. The overcrowding led to a huge increase in deaths from disease including typhus, which ran rampant, and also tuberculosis, dysentery, typhoid fever and malnutrition was very common. Belsen should only have had 10,000 prisoners, but the camp broke down and sanitation was terrible. All of these factors led to the British finding a camp in pure chaos. There were no gas chambers at Bergen-Belsen, but the 50,000 death toll was caused mostly by the conditions. It was estimated in its most deadly month that over 18,000 prisoners died, and each day hundreds were perishing from disease and starvation. Heinrich Himmler on the 11th of April 1945 agreed to give over Belsen without a fight to the British and Canadian liberators, and when the British entered the camp, they saw true hell on earth. The BBC reporter that evening, who was part of the liberation, summed up the surroundings, saying, Here over an acre of ground lay dead and dying people. You could not see which was which. The living lay with their heads against the corpses, and around them moved the awful, ghostly procession of emaciated, aimless people, with nothing to do with no hope of life unable to move out of your way, unable to look at the terrible sights around them. Babies had been born here, tiny wizened things that could not live. A mother driven mad screamed at a British sentry to give her milk for her child and thrust a tiny mite into his arms, and then she ran off crying terribly. This day at Belsen was the most horrible of my life. When the liberators entered, they found 13,000 unburied bodies and 60,000 inmates, many who were incredibly sick and hungry, and many who were dying. Still at this point, 500 people a day were dying mostly from typhus. But the liberators initially were suffering from a lack of manpower to clear up the bodies. 
To begin with, only the Commandant Yosef Kramer was arrested, but there were a number of SS members of staff and guards who had remained at the camp to supposedly maintain law and order. These were then arrested, and were then forced to clean up the bodies and bury them inside of mass graves. There were some SS guards who killed some starving prisoners, and a number of prisoners turned on Carpos, who were seen as collaborators by many, and around 170 of these were killed. A number of German citizens were also brought to Belsen to help clean up and show the crimes that had happened nearby, and eventually part of the camp was burned down to the ground by flame-throwing tanks to stop the typhus epidemic. But those members of staff who were arrested were then brought to trial at the Belsen trials. 17 members of staff who were arrested had died of typhus, and those brought to trial were Josef Kramer, the commandant, Fritz Klein, the camp doctor, Franz Hossler, the deputy camp commander, Elizabeth Falkenrath, Irma Grazer, Peter Weingartner, and many more former members of staff, from cooks to guards and other functionaries. The trial lasted for 54 days in court, and it began with the indictments and the opening speeches from the prosecution. Over the course of the trial, a huge number of witnesses came to stand, and many included the men who had liberated the camp, describing the scenes that they saw. The British even showed a film which contained harrowing images of Bergen-Belsen. All of the defendants pleaded not guilty, but many of the death sentences relied on two clauses. The first was that at Auschwitz, they had been involved in the murder or slaughter of innocent people, and the second was that they were guilty of doing the same at Bergen-Belsen. A number of the defendants who were executed worked at Auschwitz and Belsen, and those who were imprisoned instead of being executed were the ones who it was more difficult to prove had been involved in killings, executions, selections and sending people to the gas chambers. Those who were sentenced to death were Josef Kramer, the Beast of Belsen, who oversaw the mass movement of prisoners to the camp. The crimes he had committed at Auschwitz-Birkenau also came to fruition, and how he had overseen the killing of hundreds of thousands there. Fritz Klein was executed and he was a camp doctor at Belsen, and he was strongly anti-Semitic, and took part in scores of selections at Auschwitz, which resulted in the deaths of thousands. Peter Weingartner was also condemned for his crimes as a bloc leader in the women's camp at Auschwitz-Birkenau. He was known for being a guard who forced prisoners to dig ditches, and those who did not work hard enough were shot. At Belsen he worked and was indicted, as he had been involved in abusing prisoners as well as selecting them to go to their deaths. Franz Hossler was a deputy commandant under Kramer, and he was known for being brutal as he deliberately shot prisoners, even until the day the camp was liberated, and he was seen as a hitman who executed anyone who was breaking the rules. Karl Franchot was a cook who was also executed, and he was accused of shooting several prisoners at Belsen, who had been stealing food, as they were desperate. Also, he shot those prisoners, who were so desperate that they picked up potato peelings off the floor to eat. Ansgar Pichon was another cook, and he was ahead of the camp kitchen, and also found guilty of shooting prisoners who stole food. Franz Stoffel had led a death march to Bergen-Belsen, where many prisoners were shot if they were too slow to walk or try to escape, and Wilhelm Dürr was also executed as he participated in this too. One of the most infamous guards of the Holocaust was Irma Grazer, who was described as a hyena of Auschwitz. She was known as a beautiful beast, and she was particularly known for her acts of sadism and murder. She became the youngest woman to die in the 20th century under British law, and many witnesses testified of her brutality using a whip. She was known for murdering prisoners with her pistol and also her bare hands, as well as owning a dog that she encouraged to attack prisoners. Grazer also worked at Ravensbrück, and was known as a feared and savage guard. Elizabeth Falkenrath, despite her young age, was rather senior as a camp guard too, and she had been promoted to oversee all of the camp sections for the female prisoners at Auschwitz. Falkenrath was known for instigating a reign of terror and fear, and also participating in the gas chamber selections, where prisoners were sent to their deaths instantly as they arrived at Auschwitz. The final woman to be condemned was Johanna Bormann, who was described as a lady with the dog, who would encourage her hound to attack and more prisoners to death. She was known for being one of the most hated members of staff at Belsen and Auschwitz. But there were many other men and women who had worked at Bergen-Belsen, and who had been caught, and who were sentenced to time in prison, of a varying length, and also there were a number who were acquitted. As mentioned, the executions for the Belsen trials took place on the 13th of December 1945, inside of Hamlin Prison. It was a notorious execution at Albert Pierpoint, who was summoned to be the man who would take the lives of these Nazi war criminals. Pierpoint was considered an expert of his craft, and he used the long drop method, which required expert calculations. Pierpoint and his assistant met with the condemned, 
Days before, to calculate the drop needed to kill them instantly, based on their height and weight. The condemned cells where the prisoners were kept were at the bottom of the execution chamber, where a gallows with a trapdoor had been made. Pierpont would later write of the executions, and he documented how the former members of staff of Bergen Belsen were killed. For example, he said of Irma Grace's execution that, We climbed the stairs to the cell where the condemned were waiting. A German officer at the door leading to the corridor flung open the door, and we fired past a row of faces into the execution chamber. The officers stood at attention. Brigadier Patton Walsh stood with his wristwatch raised. He gave me the signal, and a sign of released breath was audible in the chamber. I walked into the corridor. Irma Grazer, I called. The German guards quickly closed all the grills on twelve of the inspection holes, and opened one door. Irma Grazer stepped out. The cell was far too small for me to go inside, and I had to pinion her in the corridor. Follow me, I said in English, and O'Neill repeated the order in German. At 9.34am, she walked into the execution chamber, gazed for a moment at the officials standing round it, then walked onto the centre of the trap, where I'd made a chalk mark. She stood on this mark very firmly, and as I placed a white cap over her head, she said in her languid voice, Schnell. The drop crashed down, and the doctor followed me to the pit, and pronounced her dead. After 20 minutes, the body was taken down, and placed in a coffin ready for burial. One by one the executions took place, with the names of the condemned called out before the cell was opened. They were led into the execution chamber accompanied by guards. Each of them followed the same pattern. Identity was confirmed before they were walked quickly up the stairs to the gallows, before arms and legs were secured. Following this a hood was placed over their heads, and the noose was secured, and then they were shuffled over the trap door, where Pierpoint had put a white chalk X, marking where they should stand. Then he quickly pushed the lever, releasing the trap door, and the condemned crashed through to their deaths. Their bodies were then taken down a while after they were left hanging as doctors confirmed their deaths. There would be a second Belson trial, where one man, Eric Jodl, would be sentenced to death. Pierpoint would go on to execute many other war criminals at Hamlin, and he executed around 226 people between December 1948 and October 1949, and often executed ten a day, and was noted for his skill and efficiency, ending the lives of the condemned quickly. But inside of Bergen-Belsen, it was true hell on earth in the final days of the conflict. What the British and Canadian liberators found stayed with them until the day they died, and many were haunted by the horror and evil of the Nazi regime. Despite hundreds of guards and staff working at Belsen, only a very few were sentenced to death and executed for their crimes. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.